You know what kind of Heavenly Father all of us want? Now, this is Holy Ghost, so y'all don't get mad at me, all right? No, you can't, but it's all right. I'll get over it. Is we want, we want to be spoiled little rich kids. Amen. <laughs> we want to be the kids that gets whatever we want, when we want. And what kind of character does that produce? Does anybody like hanging around those kids? But when we think, if we get our ultimate way with Daddy God, we want to be the spoiled little rich kids on the block. <laughs> no, I want it now. And I want what I ask for, when I ask for it. How many know sometimes He knows better than us? Sometimes He knows, he, when He says, when He knows when we have need of, how many know He really means it? He knows when he says, I shall supply all your needs. I still remember as a young man, Brother Tony, the first time God said, you supply all my needs, and I got excited, and I started telling my mom about this motorcycle I was wanting. I couldn't much older than I said, is he? <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, Pastor Bobby, he said, son, God said your needs, not your wants. I don't think you have a need for that motorcycle. Now, I couldn't wrap my mind around at that point in time, my life, what the difference was between a need and a want, believe it or not. But you know what? There's times that I've been in my life where I said, God, it don't get much more of a need than the essentials. And uh, I'm believing and standing in faith. And, and then, you know what? He had the audacity to ask me one time, Sister Rachel. I said, oh, really? Because all I'm here is whining. True story. think I don't want to take care of you? Now, listen, we all go through different stages. Don't be trying to, I'm not talking to anybody, I'm talking to the Holy Spirit right now, okay? And, uh, you know what? I, I said, well, fine, you said you should split all my needs according to your riches and glory. And I'm going to stand in faith and I'm going to have that. And you know what started happening? I started having my needs taken care of. Amen. But you know what I had to stop doing? One of the first things. This is free. None, none of this is intended. If I had my way before I felt the way I felt before service, I wouldn't even been here. As a matter of fact, to the time I was on the platform, as I had to take God, I had to stop telling God how to do it. I can tell you, just one time, since we actually we first founded the church, and. Uh, Pastor Tammy, is it okay if I share a few things? She looks scared. I, I, uh, I had come up in faith, and God was growing me and Pastor Tammy's faith. He was bringing her up to us on the same level. You know, two shall become one. Well, I had uh, 10 years of ministry on her, so guess what? That had to happen. She had to get the, the super cycle, uh, super woman act of faith came, which I would not suggest to anybody. It'll, it'll It'll either grow you or kill you. But what I didn't realize is I had to go through it with her again because two shall become one. Right? True story? Yeah. Yeah, true story. So all those things that I had to go and believe for, I had to start going through it again with Pastor Tammy, and I got a little offended with God. I've already been here, God. Why am I going through it again? And he said, you don't think you're learning something? Son, you are sadly mistaken. And uh, I was learning. To, I remember one. I can remember two different times. And y'all, you know, I don't hardly talk about money, especially in the church, very much. Amen. Y'all know that. Like, and I remember we had zero gas. We didn't have any heat in the house. I was cutting limbs to keep fire going in the fireplace and the fireplace didn't work that well. It only heated about the living room. And uh, someone they got home and after we'd moved into the house we found out the people next door were splitting the well with us and they were sucking our water dry and I was having to pay to haul water in and we were out of water and I had a newborn baby, a new bride, and all this was new to her. And uh, we found
founded the church. I've stopped traveling. And so we, we went from uh, a faith life of abundance to back to, to absolutely nothing. And uh, so I'm believing in faith. I've seen God do some awesome things. So I'm believing for a thousand dollars to be in that offering. It comes that Sunday morning. Thirty-five dollars came. Thirty-five dollars. I used to take care of the church bills and my family. I still to today don't know how God paid all the church bills for the first year or two the church was alive, other than he just miraculously did it. And then the next week, the next, the next week, it was along the same lines, 55, and then we got up to like 100, and 100 was something. If we got 100 in, something happened. And uh, about this time is when God busted me for whining. He said, I'm standing in faith, God. He said, no, you ain't you whining because you're having to go through this with Tammy again. Instead of, instead of supporting her, and, and directing her and showing her the ropes. And it wasn't easy at that time. Is that a true statement? Thank you. <laughs> and uh, it was new to her. It was a, you know, y'all, if some of you got grown up through that camp, it was, it's going to be a, some of you are going through it now. And so I, I repented and I got all those things back in line and next week I get a phone call and there's a gentleman that I had, him and another gentleman that I had ministered to at a, at, a, at a big conference in Chicago back when I was somebody before God put me through the boot camp again, you know, haha, <laughs> put in sarcasm next to that, you know, and he'd become a good friend of mine and he was a minister from Indianapolis and he said, hey, I'm going to be in Springfield next week, can we have lunch? And I said, well, I've got a son and some things, sure. I scraped up my money because that's what us men of God do when I was going to take him out to eat and bless him. I fought over that bill. I got that bill. And uh, I brought his meal. And he said, fine, you can buy the meal. But here's an envelope and here's why I came. Here's the thousand dollars you asked for. Now would you give the Lord a break for a day? <laughs> <laughs> he said, you ain't missed nothing, son. You're just growing some thing up and you're growing some people up. And, and uh, I said, well, praise God. But you know what? I have gotten a little resentful, Sister Shaman, because that money, God set up, he, God did set up his church, and he did set up to take care of the men of God through the church, and I knew what the Word of God had to say, but I kept expecting every week for that money to come through the church, and I said, I, if, if, listen, he, he does intend to take care of his, the men of God that way, he does take care of the church, but if he can't get it through the church, which he's changed most of those people that were there now, praise God, and, they're so an amen that they're getting blessed. But if he can't get it through there, if he can't get it through the channels he's supposed to, that doesn't mean he can't get it to you. Amen. Amen. This is for somebody tonight. I, but they but he's not like a daddy we can figure our mind about, you know. Because he was teaching me, he was treating me just like his kid, wasn't he? He was, listen, and I learned a valuable lesson. And you know, things started shifting after that. You know what happened? I quit taking my eyes off what came in that offering plate to survive on. Amen. Not that I, not that that's how it's supposed to come, but God's my source. You got to take your eyes off your paycheck for one thing. Amen. Your paycheck will never be enough. Amen, that's right. But God is, Amen. and he can give you more than enough. And, well, that's enough about that. I didn't mean to talk about money. But, listen, it don't matter what you have need of. He, he, he cares for you. But sometimes, he'll take you through some things. Just to make you, you know, just to make you better, to get you where you belong. Amen?
Because guess what? We were married. Right? We were married. By the way, it's her birthday. We need to sing happy birthday to her. She's 34. I'm going to be in big trouble now. I told her that. So, I won't tell you all why. But we were, we, two shall become one. We were becoming one. Guess what? It couldn't be, it, even in our faith life, it couldn't be my faith was up here and her faith was there. Guess what we had to do? We had to get on the same level. And guess what that meant for her? Because I wasn't going backwards. I, thought, I felt like that's what God was trying to do for a little bit. And I was kicking and screaming. I'm not going backwards. And he said, no, but you are going to help carry her on up where you're at. And I did that, didn't I, after that day? Yeah, kicking and screaming. <laughs> Amen. I don't know who that's for tonight. It's not our Bible study. It's just, just the Lord. And I can tell you, I didn't enjoy a lot of that time. I didn't enjoy a lot of that season. Matter of fact, we, he was, but you know what? He proved to me that if he calls me to do something, something as him, he always pays the bills. He proved it to me. He gave me his word and he proved it to me. But I can tell you, there was a little while later, I think the church was a year and a half or two years old, and most of you probably heard this story. This is for somebody tonight. I'll just keep talking for a moment. And things were still pretty rocky at the church. Do you know what something I figured out as, as a pastor planting churches? You know, I've been a pastor a while, but it's totally different when you start planting things. And you become an apostolic covering for things. And, uh, is that so there will always be stuff. There will always be, there'll always be a, no matter what you're doing for God, there will always be a reason to quit. There will always be pressures. That, the only, only, enemy only wants to hear you say two words. I quit. He doesn't care how he gets you to do it, but that's what he cares. So there was this time we were coming after, still with a lot of funds coming in, and I, didn't, and I didn't feel like as a man that I was seeing a lot of spiritual growth. And uh, I had church offers from all over, offering huge salaries and parsonage. I mean, everything a pastor's dream of, I, and, and I still get some of them, but most of you didn't figure that out right. So, I, I was getting these things, and so I was praying, God, do you want me to continue all this thing? Because I'm not seeing a lot of fruit, in my opinion. Do you want me to shut the doors? And, uh, we took a vacation to Colorado, and what the church didn't know when I left that on that Sunday morning, I didn't know if it might be the last time I shut those doors. And I was gone for a whole week. And uh, I wanted to get on with God. I was going to hear. I wanted to, even though he'd already told me, I wanted to know that I know that I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. Because I had two years worth in here. And uh, I wasn't seeing a whole lot, and, and the enemy done convinced me. I done throwing it all away, and da 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 da. And should I take this place? Should I take that place? Should I just go on? I mean, I still really didn't even like Springfield. I didn't even like Illinois. <laughs> you know? and, but I haven't been home in a year and a half, so it must be something I like that. They, uh, so we, most of you heard this story. We went out there, and, and as soon as I got out there, I had this massive toothache, and we get to Estes Park, and I get to see the mountains from the emergency room, and then they get that half taken care of, and we go on down. We're the most beautiful country in the world. And I got the GPS hooked up and following it around. And we get to Leadville, Colorado, and, and so we're going to go look at the old uh, mining towns and all the old ghost towns, things me and Pastor Tammy enjoy doing together. And uh, so 
We get up the next morning, by the way, I've slept in South America, the highest country in the world, and I could breathe better than I could in Leadville, Colorado that night. And uh, the air felt like it was so thin, neither one of us could breathe. We get up the next morning, and she goes down. I t we drive down and, and uh, to the visitor center, and she goes in and gets us a map of all the ghost towns. And they've got it marked off ones you can drive any car to, and ones you drive four wheel drives, and ones you walk, and, and ones you just dream about getting to. And so she's being my co pilot, and she's directing me. She told me to take a left on this one, and I said, Now, I'm from Colorado originally, and I worked out there some. I said, I don't know about this. I said, That looks like, I mean, there's no. And she showed me her map, and her map's been accurate, so we got started. Once we got started, there was no coming back. And uh, I knew this way before I said anything. And I'm still driving. I'm looking for anything I can turn around. But I've got a mountain on this side, and a sheer drop-off on this side, and i got about a six-and-a-half-foot road. <laughs> if that. Sometimes in, in, our, in our Dodge, in our, in our minivan. And Isaiah's in the back. He's about Hadassah's age. And uh, so we get going, and we, by the way, we got to see some awesome mine places, but I didn't stop one bit because I was straight up in the air like this, and I wasn't pulling over for nothing, no place to turn around. She starts turning uh, white, and, and this road gets worse and worse and worse. And I mean, finally, I'm literally straight up and down. The van would hardly pull itself because the gas and the air is so thin. I got all the way to the floor, and it's just very like, oh. And uh, it's a, uh, finally we, we spin out. Jump sideways on the side of this mountain. And uh, I got GPS and we're like up at like 12,000 feet at this point. And uh, we start really praying. I mean praying. <laughs> I mean, like, no, and we ain't playing around. It's like, I mean, we're, we're pulling heaven down. <laughs> and this is no joke. There was angels showed up and started pushing our man. And it got me going again, and we got almost up to the top, and then all of a sudden there's this huge rut. This ate completely out of the road. And there's this thing here. I mean, we're talking that's six foot deep. And, and uh, so I, have, I can't go backwards. And luckily, I used to four-wheel drive all the time in the Ozark, so I had a little experience. So I gave it my best shot, and that was it. We were stuck. <laughs> well, I'm praying and I'm believing for angels again. And this whole time, man, God's still talking about this church business. You know, <laughs> this whole pastoring thing still. <laughs> Everything that's going on feels just like all the stuff that the churches went through at this time and even going through in the, in the future. Spun out done the best that I've known and that was there and uh, all of a sudden I hear these, these engines and here comes this group of four wheelers on a tour this guy leading and he pulls up and you guys pinched him and his eyes were this big around he said how did you get this up here? I said, I drove it. He said, that's impossible. There's no way that man can make it up here. He said, nobody's ever going to believe me when I tell them this. I said, well, we did it. And God was still speaking to me about this church and the path that he had me on. It's because I wasn't enjoying the path. I wasn't enjoying the ride. He's still talking to me. And all I want to do is get off the side of this mountain. I don't want to care about nothing else. Yeah. God just gave me some more revelation. I'll share in a minute with you about this trip that's even going on today. And uh, so he, uh, I, they started trying to push and help, and they couldn't go. And he knew the road, and finally I let him in, and I got out, and I, I manhandled the the van and we got it up and out of there and around and he said oh, you're going to come up there's going to be a little clear you go left and you go right and you go around and you come back left there's going to be a road right there and you just go straight up and you'll be fine you'll be home free well i made it around there it was tight we get over there and there's another road even more steeper going straight up and down i said 
sick, we'll be just fine, huh? That's why I looked, looked over and told Pastor Ted. I said, what do we do now? Uh, I ain't got no choice. We're just going to have to go on. Yeah. Yeah, you, was, you were doing good back then, buddy. And so my first try, we didn't make it up the mountain so 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 good. We I had to back back down and try to get And that next time, that poor little Dodge minivan, I got to run across that meadow and I power slid it sideways and I hit that hill and we was we was coming and the rocks was chunking every which way but I wasn't I wasn't out of it till we got to the top and it barely came out of the top and there was a big flat spot there and that tour group was up there and they were on top of an old mine and they were looking out over all they could see everything. we were 14,000 feet where our GPS sit. Yeah, that shouldn't, the no minivan should be up there. And uh, they're all over there, come see this and come see that, and I don't want to see nothing. I'm still thinking, i got to get down from here. And the last road you told me was good, wasn't so good. And he said, you just go over there and take that road and it'll take you right back down. And I'm just, I'm not wanting to look around. All I want is just to get over with. I just want it done. I just want to get my family safely off the mountain. I just want it over with. So I didn't even enjoy anything at the top of the mountain. I missed all the stuff that we went there. And uh, everything we went to see was everything you could have ever wanted to see was right there. And right to this day, I kind of wish I'd have, I'd have took it in. But all I could think about was, i got to get off this mountain. Somebody's getting ministered to. I see hope actually rising in y'all's faces and spirits tonight. Amen. And so, me and Pastor Tammy, by the way, I wasn't alone. She was with me just wanting to get off the mountain. And uh, to this day, usually when I tell this story, she starts turning white. <laughs> it was, is that true? <laughs> and so we start down this mountain and the road's it's not that great, but it's not bad. And all of a sudden I get about a half a mile down the road and this thing opens up like a four-lane dirt road. And I just I'm just smooth sailing down there. And the Lord showed me prophetically where the church was gonna be at, where it was gonna grow, and where we were gonna get to that point and then where it was going to take off like that. He said, now, we're done with that. When you get back, you just keep going on ahead. And I've seen all those steps. And uh, and, and we're past that point. But I, I didn't enjoy that season at all. And I, But I also said, God, was I that stubborn that you had to, I had to almost die on a mountaintop for you to put it that plane for me? Yeah, don't answer that. <laughs> I've gotten much better at hearing now. <laughs> that experience, I said, Lord, let me, let me just hear it the first time. But you know what? What he spoke to me is, <clears throat> we, it was still daylight when we got off this thing. And I got down to the bottom, we were loaded up, and we planned on spending and staying another day in Leadville, Colorado. And guess what? I, I hit left, and we had a few hundred miles before we get to our next place, and uh, I didn't stop moving. <laughs> I, I wanted away from there. I, I, I wanted as far away from that place as I could get. And so, guess what I had? I had the old trusty GPS out again. And I wanted to take Pastor Timmy over. I used to work, her, and uh, I wanted to take Isaiah there. I still do some some days. I didn't make it that trip. I used to work over in Durango, Colorado, in the Silverton area. And there's a narrow gauge railroad, and there's the million dollar road. It's absolutely beautiful. So I put my GPS in. It's taking me straight there. I'm driving, I'm driving, hundreds of miles through mountain roads. And uh, we come up on this quaint little town up in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it was like I drove 100 miles and didn't see nothing going into it. And, uh, we get in there, and uh, I'm, at this time I was still a good husband. I need to get probably better. And there was this crafty looking glass shop that I knew Pastor Tammy would enjoy. So I pulled in so she could walk around, and I did the man thing and sat in the car. <coughs> I find a good husband, the guy I was with. Amen. And she, uh, she, uh, 
she came back out and says, this man says, we don't want to go where this thing's taking us. I said, what? She said, she said, we're going to die. <laughs> she said, if you think that road we were on was worse, he's telling me it's horrible. And the GPS was taking me over what they used to train people in the four-wheel drives. That are, I'm talking the lifted built ones on roads that is just unbelievable. And it was, and the highway just keeps going to you up the mountains and it just starts getting thinner and thinner and thinner until it comes out to nothing. We'd have been up there in the middle of the night trapped and they actually have to take emergency vehicles up there and haul them off the side of the mountain because they can't make it. It was only 22 miles from my destination, but to go around was going to take me another 350 miles. <laughs> and uh, so after they convinced me, you know, sometimes it takes a man a little convincing. <laughs> I said we're gonna spend the night. Now I'm a hundred miles in the back of nowhere, Sister Heather, in tourists in this this beautiful town, but it's booked solid, the middle of summertime. There's some log cabins and things and we're gonna have to spend the night. So I start praying, you know, and uh, I, I wanna tell you God gave us a nice resort cabin for like a hundred bucks for the night, which usually I think is five hundred. And uh, we had a great, great night and, we never made it to our destination. We had a great time. And as I was speaking tonight, he said, Son, I wasn't done talking to you that day. Because he said, You took off us in a dead run. And I believe uh, <clears throat> broken chains, we, we've come to that point where we kind of had to turn around and retrace some stuff. And we're headed to the our destination and sometimes we you know we didn't we didn't get off we followed the path but sometimes we might be following the path and he just go uh, you know you have to backtrack and do some things whoever that's for tonight I, I appreciate you listening to me um, not a lot of uh, word and then I can give you some word if you'd like it to go with it um, I do have my Bible study I would like to go to it we're going to look at them take a communion before they get rescued and what that means it's good stuff <laughs> excuse me but you know I didn't enjoy all those paths but I sure enjoyed the outcome <coughs> amen and uh, do you know that me and Pastor Tammy are stronger we are better as one and we're blessed because of it and if we hadn't learned to walk that out, and do you know the funny thing is, is that if you would have told me how things are going to turn out, I don't know if I would have believed you at that point in time on some of it. But I believe in God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Some uh, word for that. You can go just to Acts 27 and talk with, and you can see even how the last part how Paul got himself shipwrecked. And uh, God still got him to his destiny. And he taught some other men of faith and who he was along the way. Sometimes your journey isn't for you, sometimes your journey is for those that are going with you. don't think you can't learn something from it because then you'll get the spirit of pride and you'll miss out and he'll, you'll stay in the journey longer as I had to learn. Amen? I'm just telling you. I got a little resentful there for a little while. I thought this ain't fair. This just ain't fair, God. I suggest don't ever tell God something's not fair. <laughs> but God's got great things in store for you. I've seen each one of you come so far since you've been here. You've got great things ahead. I pray I pray you're encouraged tonight. My my heart to God after you came in is I just want a God to pull a hope back into you. I believe He's done that. He spoke some to you. I believe He spoke some faithful to some of you tonight. But Just take him out of that box of who you've got him figured out to be, his daddy God, and open it up because you have no idea how big he is. 
I still have no idea. I'm still learning. And I'll be learning to the day I die. But I can tell you if I'll take if I swallow the doubt, if I swallow the fear, it'll kill it all every time. And it wasn't easy for me. We've never talked about those times much. Most people don't know the things me and Pastor Timmy went through during that season. True. But it was humbling for me also as a man because God had always provided for me and here was my young bride and I felt like I was failing her because she needed things. And I wanted to go off and, I mean, I could go off and do something. I was more than qualified. I had the job opportunities. All I had to do was make to say, yep, I'll, I'll be there. Everything good been taken here, but I, I knew what God had called me to do. I knew He called me to broken chains. I knew He called me to be pastor. Now, am I going to be here to the day I die? I don't know. But will this place live on after I'm gone? Yes. That's all I got for you tonight. Y'all, if you see Acts 27, you'll see where Paul gave them a, a prophetic warning. They didn't heed to it. They got shipwrecked. God saved them. And uh, I don't even want to bet Paul probably didn't enjoy it, have to sit there and ride that out with him. But if he'd have said, I tell you, Sal. Well, he did, but not in a negative manner. If he had got a wrong heart, I don't believe God would have saved him either. Amen? Amen. What time is it? Anybody know? 7.59. 73 in here. Pray and work, and it's that thing been running all day and night, it's still getting warm in here. That's a juice. Cut another hole in the back. Um, I know this is unorthodox. I just pray you all got something tonight. I thank you for coming and listening to me. They, uh, we really have a chapter of a half left. I think we would get through it. <laughs> Tempting. What's that? 2015. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Well, any questions tonight? Anything on anybody's heart? I get anything tonight, or did I just talk to hear my head rattle? Right? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, yes, sometimes there, there's that's actually a deeper question than that sounds. Um, sometimes it's because we missed it. The first time around. Sometimes it's because he wants to take us to another level in the same thing. I can still remember the first time I started working on, you know, my character. And I really felt like I'd nailed it all. I had it all down. I could say I was good or all of it. And all of a sudden, a few years later, I'm getting more serious God and he starts working on the same stuff again. And I thought, God, you told me I was good. He said, you were at that level. And so then he started working on me again. And it was like I had to go through the same stuff all over again. And I wasn't very happy about that either at that point in time, to be honest with you. But then I started realizing that that level I had could sustain where he was wanting to take me. And then as he fine-tuned me, then I could get the support where he was taking me the next time. Does that make sense? Else 
Flatland. What's that? Flat. Easy Traveler is right around the corner. The Flatland is around the corner. The Flat Easy Traveler is right around the corner. Yeah. Well, well, don't my, give up. My, my, my flat, it still wasn't flat. It still took, but compared to what I've been in, it was gravy train. <laughs> I tell you, it came to the point where I'd done everything I could do, and I thought I was good. You know, I could full wheel with the best of them. Could have probably done it professionally. But. Yeah. I told Pastor Tammy they were taking pictures. I said, we'll be in the newspaper on Monday. I'll never believe this many many pictures. Kind of free suit. If you had the right tool, it would have been easier to travel. Yeah, but sometimes the Lord takes us through things. The thing is, He takes us through. Jeremiah 29 11 says, I have plans for you, not to harm you, but to prosper you. The thing is, is we all think those those plans are like the school of rich kid plans. Mm -hmm. Walking in, talk <laughs> <laughs> that means you're getting money. You all are getting really quiet on me. So either, either I totally missed it tonight or God's still working on the hearts. So but I won't believe in He's doing the last. Amen. Amen. But you know, I don't want to take away from the fact that God wants you to have an abundant life. He wants to bless you. But I believe every even every level of blessing comes with a new level of stewardship. Yeah. And he has to get our character up to up to a level to be able to steward the things he wants to flow through us. And sometimes that takes a little work work fine tuning us. But his plans are good. <laughs> Amen. All hearts clear? Yep. Yeah. Amen. There, I gave you some. Lord, we just thank you for your word tonight. Lord, I pray it will bring forth fruit 30, 60, 100 fold. And uh, Lord, I thank you just for sharing my heart. God, I pray you minister to some. In Jesus' strong name. And, and I just also want to put out there, I am very big on the word. I'm not big on just coming in and having a talk to make somebody feel better. Most people know that about me. I did have my Bible study prepared, and uh, tonight I was just sharing my heart, and uh, I, I shared enough scriptures, I believe, to back it up that it was the Word of God for you. It was the Holy Spirit speaking, but if you need more, I'll gladly get them for you. Amen. So, God bless you.